and I was just cruising down these mountains, just zigzagging my way on these big open roads, no cars, no bikes, nothing, just me and the mountains and this golden sun. <sighs> Qu'est-ce que je vais te nommer? Je vais te nommer l'amour, l'amour à la raison. L'amour et moi, nous sommes un. Hey friends, Sheila here. I am a nutritionist and bicycle traveler, and I recently returned from a three and a half month cycle tour from Scotland to Croatia. And now that I'm back, I am often getting the question, what was my favorite part of my bicycle tour? This is an impossible question to answer because I absolutely loved every country I went to, every place I visited. Each and every one holds a very special place in my heart. But if I had to pick, I still couldn't, I still couldn't pick, but I could narrow it down to three places. And those three places would be the highlands and islands of Scotland, the coasts and national parks in Croatia, and the Alps from Munich to Venice. I've already done a few videos about cycling Scotland. I did a video about cycling in Croatia. And so I figured today I should round it out and do a video on cycling the Alps. I especially wanted to do this video because cycling the Alps was something that was kind of on my mind ever since I started planning this trip. I knew I wanted to cycle the Alps, but it seemed really, really intimidating. The stories I had heard about people who had cycled in mountain ranges sounded kind of scary. It sounded like they were often on roads with very small shoulders with a lot of cars going really fast on steep descents so I knew I wanted to get to the Alps but I just wasn't sure if it was feasible and I am just so happy now to be able to say that it is feasible it is incredibly enjoyable incredibly beautiful incredibly doable and I wanted to share everything I learned with you so that if cycling the Alps is something you want to do you can create this experience for yourself Today I will cover the route I took through the Alps, the overall experience of what it was like, what I saw, and also we'll touch on the difficulty level so you can decide if this is something you feel comfortable doing for yourself. First off, let's talk about the route. The route goes from Munich to Venice. I looked and looked trying to find a route through the Alps because the tough thing with mountain ranges is there aren't a lot of roads or routes that go through them and finding one that you'll feel safe on as a cyclist doesn't feel that easy, but they do exist. And this route from Munich to Venice is an amazing option. It is an actual bike route. There's an actual GPX file you can download so you can follow the route. And there's also little signs along the whole way so you can just follow along with the signs as well. Because it is a bike route, there are also lots of campsites along the way. There are bed and breakfasts, there are hotels. So there's lots of lodging options for you to choose from. Also, because it's all designed as part of a cycle route, there are a lot of cool signs along the way so you can learn a bit about the towns and the nature and everything that you are going through. The majority of it is actual bike routes. You are actually on your own, only with other cyclists. And then there are some stretches where you're sharing the space with cars, but they're nice, quiet roads. There are some teeny tiny sections that are on busier roads, but I will address those in this video so you can see how you want to tackle those. So let's dig into a little bit of the logistics of the route. Like I said, it goes from Munich to Venice, it goes through three countries, Germany, Austria, and Italy. It is about 560 kilometers long. There is a stretch at the beginning at the end that you can select from two different route options. So there's a bit of a choose your own adventure, but on the whole it's around 560 kilometers. So it's something you can probably do in about a week. Of course, it depends how many kilometers you like to cover in a day and how fast you like to go. And the vertical meters climbed is about 3000 meters, which when you think about it spread over that distance, isn't that crazy? I feel like when I thought about cycling the Alps, I just pictured it being an insane amount of vertical meters, but 3000 is pretty doable. You get descents, you get some flatter parts, and you do have some climbs, but I do feel like it's doable. And also never forget, if you really wanna cycle the Alps and you feel like that's too much, don't forget there are options. You could take an e-bike if you have one, you could rent an e-bike, you could take trains for the harder sections, so there are options. 
Now I'll tell you a bit about the route I took and what I experienced so you have a sense of the adventure you're about to go on. The way I started is a little different than most people would. Shortly after I left Prague, I actually ran into a couple of German cyclists who were heading for Munich as well. And so I teamed up with them and I rode with them for about a week. When I got to Munich, I stayed in Munich for a couple days. And then one of those cyclists very kindly invited me to stay with him and his family just south of Munich in Ippeldorf. So instead of taking the actual cycle route, I headed a little more west to stay over with him in Ippeldorf. And then from there, I headed into the Alps towards Innsbruck in Austria to kind of rejoin the bike path. That meant that I went off the bike path, absolutely worth it for me because I got to stay with my friend, but uh, I would generally advise sticking more so to the actual bike path. The way I went did have some bike paths for pretty long stretches that were really lovely, but then there were also some sections that I got kind of pushed onto busier roads for a while. And some of those were on really steep descents where the trucks kind of have those runoffs, you know, so if they're losing control, they can just run off this other path. And as a cyclist, you really don't want to be in their way when they're losing control and need to take that exit ramp. So those are always slightly more stressful experiences. And so to avoid those, I was kind of taking random back paths through cow patches and up and down rough terrain. So highly recommend staying on the actual route. I'm sure it will be a smoother experience than the one I took. But in any case, I made it to Innsbruck, which is a beautiful town. These gorgeous buildings with mountains in the background all along the Inn River. I camped in Innsbruck, and if you want to know all the places that I stayed so you can help plan your trip, I will create a list of them over on my website so you can have a look at all those specifics over there. Now leaving Innsbruck, there is an eight kilometer stretch where you rejoin the main road. So that morning I psyched myself up. I'm like, yes, I'm all ready. I can handle this. And I got out to the road and it was just a really steep climb. It's eight kilometers of mostly climbing all the way to the Brenner Pass and the stretch I was on was very busy there wasn't a shoulder and I just didn't feel comfortable being on that steep a climb with cars going by so fast so I made the very difficult decision to go back to Innsbruck and get the train to bypass those eight kilometers to the top of the Brenner Pass I'm sure if you're a bike tourer you know how challenging those decisions are to make because you just want to bike every single inch but when I saw that road I just didn't think I was gonna feel safe and really enjoy that stretch, so I decided to grab the train. I have heard from cyclists who have done that stretch. They said cars gave them enough space, so it's something for you to think about and decide what feels right to you. I ended up grabbing the train. I do not regret it at all. It was a beautiful train ride. It's super short and quick, and you get to see all these crazy bridges that are just so high, going from mountain to mountain with cars going along them. I don't have any pictures to show you because I was just in awe the entire time. I was just, no words. So beautiful train ride. And then from the top of the Brenner Pass, you're just cruising down mountains on full on bike lanes. Just, it's a bike lane zigzagging down the mountain. And then the next couple days were just beautiful cycling through the mountains. There's gorgeous crystal clear blue water, mountains all around you, really lovely sweet Italian towns in the landscape of all of these mountains around them. There are also some super cool stretches where you actually go through the mountains. Some stretches of the bike route used to be railroads, so there are these tunnels that go right through the mountain. It is the weirdest feeling, but so incredibly cool. Really lovely campsites to stay at. And then it is time for the Dolomites. If you aren't familiar with the Dolomites, they are a mountain range with all these crazy rock formations, unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. The night before the Dolomites, I stayed on this campsite that was on a crystal clear lake, mountains all around, you know, just waking up and having coffee and breakfast, looking out at these mountains is just a crazy experience. I will say if you are camping at that point, you are at a higher altitude, so it cold. My sleeping bag is designed to go down to minus three degrees Celsius and I think that was the only night of my whole trip that I was waking up a bit in the night because I was cold. So something to keep in mind is just that you are at a higher altitude if you're camping there. But it's beautiful and worth it. 
And then the next day I headed out to see the Dolomites. Now an extra nice thing about this stretch is it's built on an old railroad, which means because trains can only go up or down at a certain angle, I wanna say like three or 4% grade. It means you're going up and down at a very reasonable degree. You're not doing massive steep climbs and descents. And you're going by these beautiful lakes and through these mountains. The stretch of the route is not paved, it's gravel. When I was there at least, some stretches had been washed away so it was a little uneven there are some tricky parts but for the most part you know take it easy go slow and you'll get there just fine there are of course no fences or anything and there are some stretches that have pretty steep drop-offs so go slow take it easy keep yourself safe but it's absolutely beautiful it was one of the most beautiful parts of my trip most beautiful parts of the Alps just seeing the Dolomites all around you is absolutely stunning. And then after the Dolomites is what I think is a hidden gem because during the Dolomites, there are a lot more people who kind of go and camp and just do a day of cycling through the Dolomites. So that stretch is much busier. There's a lot more bikes and people out. But then after that, things start to get quieter. You actually leave the bike route and you're back on roads, but they're incredibly quiet. And there was one stretch where after, you know, going really slowly on these gravel roads and watching out for other cyclists, all of a sudden I was on this big open road. The sun was starting to set, so it was this beautiful golden light. And I was just cruising down these mountains, just zigzagging my way on these big open roads, no cars, no bikes, nothing. Just me and the mountains and this golden sun. <sighs> And then at the end of that, you've kind of made it through most of the hilliest part. Now there is a stretch near Longarone for a few kilometers where you are again pushed back onto a main road. I found cars pretty good about giving me space and it wasn't as stressful as I thought it might be. I stayed at a cute little bed and breakfast and then I was off and kind of starting to leave the mountains. They were starting to get smaller and smaller. My route was kind of flattening out a bit. I camped at an organic kiwi farm. It's this Italian couple that owns an organic kiwi farm and they just let people camp in it. So I camped amongst the rows of kiwis, which I highly recommend. The campsite was run by this really lovely older Italian couple and they didn't speak much English and my Italian is not very good. But the woman said to me, Montagna o mare, meaning are you going to the mountains or are you going to the sea? And I stopped for a moment and I was like, mare. And it was just this weird moment being like, I, I made it through the Alps. I made it through the mountains. I'm going to the sea now. And it felt so surreal because I had spent so long just thinking about the Alps and how I was gonna get through them and if I was strong enough to get through them and then if I could find a route to get through them. And it was just on my mind for so long of this trip. And all of a sudden I had done it. I was through the Alps and I was going to the sea. So if you do this route, just Really enjoy all that time you spend in the mountains and when you get through, just really celebrate it because it's absolutely doable, but it's also incredibly challenging and it's a really important to celebrate when you do make it through there. So from there, I set out. It was my last day. I was going towards Venice. Everything kind of flattens out. You're on some bike routes, some quieter roads with cars. There's one cool section where there are these kind of sunken ships and just kind of nice roads all the way to Venice. Something to keep in mind is Venice does not allow bikes. You can't bike them, you can't walk them, you cannot have a bike in Venice, which totally makes sense because Venice is all bridges made of stairs. Like it's just hundreds and hundreds of bridges made of stairs. Like you wouldn't want a bike there anyway, especially not a bike that's loaded down with stuff. So I actually stayed in a suburb outside Venice called Mestre, and then I just took the bus into Venice to explore Venice. I think that is everything I have to say about the Alps. Honestly, I think it's the route I probably recommend to fellow cyclists the most because it is such an exceptional experience to go through the Alps, to see the Dolomites, to be in the mountains, and to be on bike routes the whole time. That seems so crazy to me. I am just so grateful that Germany and Austria and Italy invested in creating this route through the Alps because it is so exceptional. And to be able to bike the Alps 
and to do so much of it on bike routes or quiet roads just felt very, very special. Like I said, I will have some of those more specific details about where I stayed over on my website. I will also link below to a really great resource I found that breaks down every single part of the route and also has a GPX file. If you have any questions I did not answer in today's video, do not hesitate to leave them below. I am just so passionate about this route and if biking the Alps is something you wanna do, I really want to help you make that happen. If you like this video, and you found it helpful, please give it a like. It really supports my channel. And if you want to be notified whenever I put out new videos, hit subscribe and the little bell below. Thanks. Have a good one.